Well, hi folks, welcome back to the plot. It's been a little while. Um, I've been having a really uh, quite awful time, to be honest, but it is very, very nice to be back up on an extremely windy day, but um, it is clear, it's dry, which is the main thing. And the main task for today, other than giving you guys a bit of an update about what's been going on, the main task is gonna be in here, you'd see just over my shoulder, getting in and doing the, the kind of final, the main harvest of the chili peppers. But first, let me just take you on a little tour and show you what's been going on, because it's been about two weeks. Now, sadly, my main task, the greenhouse, there has been almost no progress on this. I have finished digging out the middle, uh, which <laughs> was just a pretty Herculean task, it turns out. Um, <laughs> so the middle is all dug out, but I do need to get to work on the base and all the foundations and everything. You can see though, however, here is number one, some of the sleepers have arrived. In fact, just last night, I had a bad dream that this side of my, my old greenhouse completely collapsed because of this rotting sleep. <laughs> um, I always have weird dreams about the allotment, but uh, anyway, yes, the rest of the plot is still looking quite tired. I have been going through and kind of tidying up the beds quite a lot though. You can see a bit of chili pepper evidence there, but here are the rest of the sleepers. They, <laughs> they kind of protected them a little bit from the wind, but you can see them down there. They are uh, really long and I had to get them delivered to the plot. <laughs> I've got to cut two of them to size uh, with hand tools, which I'm really not looking forward to. <laughs> and not this is an amazing find though. Here, I've got a few bags of leaf mold. It's not leaf mold yet, I suppose it's just leaves, but uh, there's a guy who kind of does a bit of groundkeeping for, we've got flats next door and they've got like a bit of a, kind of courtyard area in a car park with loads of trees. And I saw he was bagging up all the leaves. <laughs> they were just gonna go in the bin and they're already in, you know, black sealed plastic bags, which is just perfect for making leaf mold. So I had a quick word with him. He was really kind, he was asking about the allotment and all sorts and uh, yeah, and now I've got a source of leaf mold. Uh, he said he's just gonna kind of leave the bags for me, um, which is just so good, because they're like right next to the car. It's just, it's just ideal, really, really cool. You have to love it when you can turn someone's waste into like a nice garden product. And the compost bays as well. I thought I'd just have a quick mention about this. This one is brimming, and it's been on my to-do list this year, this winter, hopefully, to get in and kind of give these a bit of a spruce. I basically want to kind of clad the inside edges with um, a kind of plastic or something to just kind of seal it, stop stuff falling through. This side's pretty good, but some of them, uh, you know, let a lot of material through. And ideally I'd like to put lids on them to control the moisture. And as well, the green manure, the bean test. This was, it was all a bit weird, wasn't it? Um, but basically these field beans that I put in to test for amino pyrolid, they were looking really sad, but I think they were just leggy because there's very little light in this position, but I'm pretty satisfied with these now. There's no sign of amino pyrolid damage. And I can start soon. Well, I can put another job on the to-do list, which is getting all of that kind of horse manure prepped with the beds. You can see the field beans actually on the plot are looking really healthy as well as the turnips. It's just starting to rain, so I think it's time to have a little look in the greenhouse. I would love to say that everything is amazing in here, but unfortunately, we've got a few issues. But first, let me tell you kind of where I've been and what's been going on, because uh, it's not been a particularly happy time. Now, I'll try and keep this relatively brief, because I don't really want to dwell on it, and I've kind of spent two weeks kind of dealing with it a little bit, but. Basically, both of my parents have uh, had some ongoing health issues recently, and you might have noticed back in summer, uh, there was a period where I didn't upload or really do anything on the plot for about a month, and my dad was really, really ill. He was in hospital after a, a heart attack, and um, he had sort of ongoing complications, and uh, you know, it was a really, really horrible time. And unfortunately, just last Sunday, um, he had to go back to hospital and he had some ongoing health issues. So um, that's kind of where I've been. Um, and, you know, both of those kind of, both my parents' health issues have caused me all sorts of kind of anxiety and worry this year. And I've not really mentioned it on the channel. Um, this year I found loads of solace in the allotment and kind of coming up and kind of using it as an escape. And it's been really, really nice. Um, so I thought I'd keep it short and sweet and just let you know that's kind of what's been going on in the background for me. And it's one of the reasons that a lot of the crops, like these peppers, uh, had a bad year because, <laughs> unfortunately, my dad's health issues kicked off 
you know, at the kind of height of the growing season when it was really important to be potting everything on and all of that kind of stuff. But all things considered, it could be far, far worse. And I do like to focus on the positives. And today, hopefully, we're going to have a good chili harvest. But let me just show you the key issue at the moment, which does kind of crop up around this time of year sometimes. And that issue is best highlighted on this, my worst affected plant. This is a sugar rush stripey. And you can see this plant is not looking too happy as it comes towards its end of the season, but it is also covered in spots of black mold. Now this is common kind of around this time of year, especially if like me, you've closed your greenhouse up for winter, you want to get everything nice and warm. It means that there's just not much ventilation and it's made worse by the fact that we've had a remarkable aphid infestation towards the end of the year. These kind of showed up at the start of October, um, out of nowhere, really late, quite unexpected. And my phone is going off. Bear with me, please. <laughs> okay, what was I saying? Yes, the aphids. The issue with aphids, especially around this time of year, um, it is shocking how much they exploded. Well, we've just had this really mild period. You can see them on the stem there, look. I hadn't realised quite how out of control this aphid population had got until just a few days ago, actually, unfortunately. But the issue with aphids, especially around this time of year when you've not got the ventilation, is that all of their kind of their sticky secretions, their, the honeydew that they make, that is basically food for mould. And that is why some of these plants are really, really badly affected with mould covering their leaves at the moment. I'm not sure particularly how much harm it has for the plants, but now it's the end of the year. I'm not far away from frosts. It's time to just get in. And I'm going to have a little bit of a talk about these peppers as well as a harvest. Now people are always shocked by <laughs> how late my kind of chili peppers last. And a lot of people just don't realize that these plants are fairly resilient. They can deal with a little bit of those kind of cold temperatures, but once it hits freezing, that's it. Your plant is going to be a goner. So if you've got a greenhouse or they're undercover or you're on the south coast like me, you can keep these going and going. Um, and of course, you can overwinter them as well, but that's something for a different video. Today, I'm going to be making a choice based, you know, on each plant as to whether or not I'm going to basically chuck it in the compost. And it will be based on A, how much I like the plant, how much I enjoy the chili peppers, and also, just how much green fruit it's got left on it. You can see this is my Bangalore Whippet's tail. I wasn't super impressed with the flavor of this one, but it is quite a nice one to have. Interestingly, quite consistently, the, the tips just don't ripen. It's very, very strange. But um, yes, this one is mostly, mostly ripe with, I don't know, a small handful of little green pods on here. So I think this one is gonna be one for the compost bin. And while we're here, I thought I'd just give you three really quick kind of chili harvesting tips. The first is that make sure if you've got chilies that look similar, <laughs> keep them separate, especially if they're different spice levels or, you know, different, they have different flavor profiles. I've been kind of growing these all season and I'm, I've got my eye in now, so I know how to tell the difference between all of my peppers. The other one is if you don't have any snips with you or secateurs or anything, the way to pick a chili pepper is to basically kind of go up the stem Look at the way it's growing, and if you go opposite to it, it's really easy to just kind of snap off, and you get the kind of the green tip with it, and <laughs> you don't risk kind of breaking the pepper, uh, damaging it for storage, or getting any spice on your fingers. And the third is if you you've not got long left for your growing season, but you still want to ripen some chilies. This is really good, especially if you've had a bit of a naff year and you just want to eke out everything you can. You can cut the stem, kind of go back as far as you can to the main stem of the plant. And then if you hang these upside down, they should continue to ripen because chili peppers don't ripen like other kind of fruits and vegetables like tomatoes. They might change color, but they won't develop that kind of sweetness. Whereas if you hang them kind of upside down, they do ripen properly. I wasn't super impressed with this chili plant. But I haven't cooked with it yet, and it could be that, like some, some peppers, especially in the pubescens um, kind of family, that I think this is a pubescens annum cross, uh, some of the pubescens, like the piripiris, they need a bit of cooking or a bit of something to kind of develop their flavour, and they don't actually taste that nice off the plant. But I do have three of these plants, and they have been very prolific, so I'm not super precious about this one, and it can go in the compost. 
there is something really satisfying about starting to clear this greenhouse. The next pepper plant, probably my favourite of the season, and this looks really poorly. It looks as though it hasn't been watered in an age, but I can assure you it has. This is just end of season, drop in temperature, and a bit of a, a more sensitive chilli plant to that change of season. But this is the ring of fire, and it is just, it's really amazed me. It's such a common chilli pepper to kind of, you know, see, and a common one that you hear about, but its flavour profile really did blow me away. It's so sweet, so smoky, and it's just got that, that perfect level of heat for me. I'm going to get these off, and it is definitely one for the compost because there's only a couple of green chilies on here. And here we have the little harvest. It's not particularly impressive, you know, this has been a bad year for my peppers. There'd normally be plants twice the size of this in much, much larger pots. I specifically had fewer plants in the greenhouse to make room for their bigger pots this year. But I've explained why that all went wrong, <laughs> unfortunately. But this is kind of the fourth major crop around this size I've had from this plant. And for a plant that's only this size, it's another reason that it's one of my favourites this year. They are just incredibly prolific. They've really given me a lot of chilies. I do as well actually have one of these home in the conservatory that has done really, really well as well. And I might try and overwinter that one um, just because this is a variety that I've loved so much. <laughs> Got all this grass. These really haven't had the attention that they need. Next, I'm going to tackle all of this behind me. And I was a little bit worried that these plants wouldn't do too well on the floor. This is a collection of piri piri plants, so <laughs> they have just been amazing. Similar to the Ring of Fire, I've had multiple harvests off here, but this should be the final and most abundant harvest from those, and I'll show you just how much I've harvested in a second. Now I'm just in the in the practice of harvesting these. I've just pulled up this branch, just, ah, oh, look at this. This makes my heart sing. <laughs> Realised that so far in the video, I've kind of been focusing on the process and not the emotion. I'm just smiling so much. There is something about chili peppers. Look at the colour. I love it. I love it so, so much. These are just my favourite, favourite plants to grow. And I should mention that these are, these are Chili Chump's own seeds. And if you're in the market for some interesting chili varieties, I'll link Chili Chump's seed shop down in the description below. And while I'm here, uh, look, there's loads of greens on this one. Um, so I am going to leave these piri piris just for a little bit longer. And you can see they're actually in flower, which is just incredible for the time of year. I very much doubt we'll get any fruit from those, but I'm just going to leave these, see, see how they go. And speaking of green, one other kind of harvesting tip. Uh, people ask me all the time, you know, what on earth do you do with all of these chili peppers that you harvest? It's sauce, sauce and more sauce. I make way too much hot sauce with my peppers, but I just love this stuff. And one other kind of extra tip is if you're going to be making sauces yourself, just beware when you harvest, just try and make sure that you use the, the most ripe peppers. Sometimes you can get ones that, you know, in the instance of a piri piri that goes red, it's, it's gone red, but it's kind of a pale red. And sometimes those flavors just haven't fully developed and you'll get this kind of really green, kind of vegetal, hey, vegetal, <laughs> it's difficult to say, vegetal taste that will kind of cut through your whole sauce and make it really bitter. So just, you know, that's one to look out for. I see lots of kind of new kind of hot sauce makers making that mistake. And speaking of hot sauce, I've done one video on hot sauce before, but they're quite difficult to make. And I did make a really quick one on Instagram recently. So I'll link that in the description and check that out if you just want to see a really quick little snippet of what I do. And while I've taken a quick break from harvesting, there's, there's a couple of other things I meant to show you at the start. And the first is down here. I have a feeling this might be the first long video in a little while, but down here you can see I've got some tomato side shoots. I've only recently kind of planted these in these tiny little three inch pots. And this is a little trick that I saw What's that? I think that's actually, that's a volunteer that's come out of a chili plant. Get rid of you. <laughs> uh, but these ones are Crimson Crush, and this is an F1 variety that I wanted to grow again next year. Uh, and, you know, to save on seed costs, what you can do, apparently, is overwinter these little side shoots. And what I'm going to do is take these home, because they won't survive in the unheated greenhouse out here. But I might put those on a windowsill at home, maybe under grow lights later on with the chili peppers or something like that. I will make sure that they've not got any aphids on before I introduce them to my chili seedlings. But it's just a neat little thing, a little reminder for you to, to have a go at doing this as well if you've got any F1 varieties of tomato that you want to try out again next year. 
over here, the actual tomatoes themselves, these are all gone now. Uh, this is something I have done off camera. But we do still have some, still have some over here, a little, a few little crimson crush. Look, <laughs> one ripe tomato, which is a miracle for me. If you've seen videos this season, not a good year for tomatoes. So any tomato is a bonus. Oh, and the other thing, the other thing I was going to say, let's go back to the chili peppers. But no, there is one more thing. <laughs> it's very entertaining. Uh, one other update. I've started converting these paths um, out here. And look, this one in the middle now is pretty much fully dug over. And when I finished the greenhouse, this was before my dad was back in hospital, uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to take a little break from working on this greenhouse foundation because I've been doing it for so, so long. And I thought, yeah, I'll just finish digging out, <laughs> digging out this path. You know, I'm tired of digging out stones <laughs> from the soil. So I came over here forgetting <laughs> that this was the foundation for an old shed or something. So I went from digging stones in one part of the plot to digging stones in the other. You can see just how many there are here. <laughs> and this is what I pulled out of this small area. <laughs> it's just like there's no escape from the stones wherever I go. Anyway, back to the chili peppers. So a little while later, most of those pyripods are harvested and it's decent. It's decent, but I'll be honest, I was expecting a little bit more, to be honest. Um, I'm still smiling, obviously, but one of those things about piri piri plants is that it's a smaller chili pod. They're not, they're not tiny. You do get much, much smaller ones, but it is a smaller pod, so it can be a lot of work, a lot of time to harvest. Um, thankfully, my plants aren't too big this year, but just next door we've got this, the Numex Suave Red, and it's got some kind of habanero-shaped pods on here. They've got that habanero flavor, but none of the heat. A really interesting one to have grown. But the weirdest growth structure, I showed this off much earlier in the year. I picked it up and I was able to <laughs> kind of take it out of the greenhouse. I can't do that now. But this is just so tall. It's so, so strange. And this one is covered with green pods. So this is another one that I'm going to leave for a little while because the ones on there as well aren't quite fully ripe yet. But really, really interesting. And then there's just a few more. I've just hit my head on the window. <laughs> Ow. There's just a few more to look at up here. I am going to start to speed through a few of these because I know I have been waxing lyrical. I, I always find it difficult to stop when it comes to chili plants. But this is my paper lantern habanero. Not particularly impressed with these. Um, they are scarily hot. <laughs> I had one of these once and I wasn't expecting. It really did blow my face off. Um, <laughs> they're, they're okay. You know, they're a standard plant. It's not been particularly prolific. Uh, it's kind of grown a bit it's looked a bit sad, a little bit sparse most of the year. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a nice pod. It's a nice, it's a nice kind of, unre well, I say unremarkable pod. Look at this. Look at this weird little one. Oh, I'm dropping them. Oh, I'm dropping them. This is what they normally look like. <laughs> Very strange. Anyway, we'll get these harvested and they will spice up a sauce nicely. I'm not sure I'll be growing this one again next year though. It's just not particularly remarkable, you know? Now this one, look at this one. This one has been, it's like a little dark horse. It's really surprised me in the second half of the year. This is my butcher Lokia. Once upon a time, the hottest pepper in the world. I think around 2008 or something that Guinness World Record was set. And earlier in the year when I did my big pepper update, this, it just wasn't doing it. You know, it, it didn't, it just had barely any pods. It had one or two tiny little green ones. And I thought, you know what? It's not been the year for the Butcher Lokia. I can't see a single pod on the Butcher Lokia. There's just one or two little flowers that look like they've set. And I've been trying to grow one of these for years as well, actually. You know, I've had a few kind of failed germinations, just ones that never took off. And this year we finally got some absolutely gorgeous pods on here. These have like a really, uh, just a gorgeous color. They've developed a really nice kind of rich dark red. They're not super um, lumpy bumpy, <laughs> a technical term. Um, you know, some of those kind of, these super hot pods, they get those really crinkly folded kind of exteriors where you know, all that oil kind of gets, it just looks horrible, you know, it just looks like pain. These ones have got a little bit of that, but not too much. Um, they do have a lot of aphids on here, unfortunately, but 
This is just, I'm just really, really over the moon that this came through. Look at this one, that is a proper, you know, some of these are a really good size. Look at this one. As big as my fingers, it's behind this leaf. I'm really, really, really happy with this. This is a really nice surprise, you know. I thought, I only, I hadn't realised until today actually that there were this many pods on here. Really nice looking plant. Ones like this I get emotionally excited about are the only ones that I ever really think about overwintering. I might give this one a go. I always say every year I'm not going to bother with overwintering. It's more hassle than it's worth. <laughs> I want to taste one like I'm so excited, but um, no, just no. You know, I will, I will probably make these into a kind of maybe a dedicated ghost sauce or something like that. Ghost pepper is the other name for these butcher like is. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, next up, we have one of the mild peppers. And do you remember earlier in the year, I binned loads of the kind of the bell peppers and the milder ones, and I said, I, they're, they're just much higher maintenance than spicy peppers, and I don't do well growing them. Well, look at this one. <laughs> now, not only does this thing look like it's never been watered in its life, it's also far and away, well, maybe, it's one of the most affected by the aphid damage, anyway. And there's just all sorts in here. They're really quite horrible. So I'm gonna take the nicer looking peppers that aren't, that haven't got too much aphid on or anything like that. And we'll have a few for the fridge, but this is just, I don't, you know, they just have different requirements, the bell peppers. <laughs> I just don't grow them very well. And I say that that was a bell pepper. It's actually a padron, which is mildly spicy. I think they're, they're less spicy than a jalapeno though, and you're meant to have them green. But they do, they are lovely and sweet and nice when they go red, and the fact that this plant has survived, despite my best attempts to get it, is quite a testament to their Padron pepper, I think. Uh, and I would recommend giving these a go. You're meant to, like I say, fry them when they're green. They're like a tapas pepper. But, um, <laughs> yeah, oh dear. <laughs> This next one, I think, just gets, it does get, it deserves a bit of an honourable mention, you know. This is the Bishop's Crown, and this is from the Chili Chump Seed Kit, and it's got this really cool little funky shape, and it is a delicious little pepper, really nice to eat fresh. I would snack on this one, but it is, <laughs> got a few aphids on there, so <laughs> not so nice. But um, yeah, this is a really nice one, and I think mainly this is going to bulk out a few of my sauces. It's really nice to have something like this in the greenhouse to, dial the heat back a bit on, on a really hot sauce. And just a, yeah, a nice, fresh, kind of citrusy flavour to this one. Uh, it quite impressed me. Quite, quite like this little Bishop's Crown. The greenhouse is now looking extremely bare. We have chilli plants, pretty empty. And last, and well, not quite least, there are just two more plants. I wanted to mention this. This is the BBM. And we have had some lovely pods off here. This is a chocolate kind of reaper cross. It is awful looking, absolutely horrendous. And I, unfortunately, I think I've left these pods on the plant a little bit too long. A lot of them have gone a bit soft and squidgy and they hadn't gone fully dark. So I was waiting for them to fully ripen. I think I might have made a bit of a mistake on that, but I do have lots of those in the freezer. Extremely prolific, given the kind of super hot nature that you normally take a long time. But we've got really good sized big pods on here. And like I say, I've got a lot of those in storage that are gonna spice up a sauce. And then down here, the sad, sad sugar rush stripey that is not so stripey, <laughs> just red. Um, these, oh, such awful aphid damage, but hopefully, an amazing taste. So I'm gonna give those a really good clean and hopefully be able to do something with those. But folks, I'm gonna wrap it up there because we're losing the light and I know these chili pepper videos always go on and on and on. I really hope you've enjoyed this. It's, it's helped me a lot, it's lifted my spirits a lot because like I say, it's been a, a really awful time recently. So I'm just really happy to have these, these harvests and it's been quite a success overall given a pretty crap year. Thank you ever so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time.